Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the Penfield. We'd appreciate some quiet, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the Penfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Tonight's meeting is going to take place in two parts. Our first part will be the public hearings, where we will ask applicants to come up to the podium and give us a uh, name and address, and then explain to the board members why the relief uh, requested should be granted. After the applicant is done, we'll have some questions, and then we will ask anyone in the audience that wants to come up and speak about the application uh, to do so after giving name and address as well. Uh, when the public hearings are adjourned, we will take a brief recess, and then we will uh, reconvene in the back of this room to deliberate on tonight's applications and also to tend to any unfinished business that the uh, board may have. Each and every meeting, I point out that the town um, goes uh, through a lot of um, actions to make sure that people are notified, citizens are notified of their right to come in and talk about these applications. We, we make applicants put signs up in front of the property, send postcards to neighbors, uh, post uh, the agendas on the uh, website, internet, uh, and then also do the old-fashioned way of posting on bulletin boards and such. And the town does that so that people are fully informed of their right to come in and speak about applications. And having said that, I'd ask everyone to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. And Harold, first application, please. Application number one, Scott Julian, Julian Food Services Incorporated, 289 Craig Road, Pittsburgh, New York, 14534. Request a conditional use permit under Article 3-3-77-A and Article 10-10-4 of the code to allow a Little Caesars Pizzeria at 2200 Penfield Road. The property is owned by Penfair Plaza LLC and is zoned GB. This is SPL number 140.01-1. Dash 3.1. This is application number 13Z-0022. Good evening, everybody. Yes. Hey, my name is Scott Julian. I'm the uh, president of Julian Food Services. We're a franchisee of Little Caesars. Uh, started about uh, 2007, and we currently have two stores: one in Webster, across from Hagedorn's, and one uh, in Arondequoit, near the House of Guitars. Uh, tonight I'm here to talk about the conditional use permit. Uh, we're looking at the space uh, at Penn Fair Plaza. I think everyone's familiar with that. Um, it's actually the space where the golf shop used to be. It's a good season for golf, so everyone must be out hitting the ball. But uh, it's about 1,600 square feet, and it's located right next to the Garden House uh, Chinese restaurant, Dragon House. Uh, not sure if you're familiar with Little Caesars. I thought I'd give you a little bit of background, but uh, the franchise has been around since 1959. That's the year I was born. So it's been around for 50, 54 years. Uh, we have franchise stores and company-owned stores across the country. There are six stores here in Rochester, New York. We mentioned Webster and Arondequoit. There's one on Monroe Avenue and three over in the Greece and Gates areas. Uh, what we offer is basically a value-based pizza. We own, uh, we sell a $5 large pizza. Can't get better than that. Uh, it's for one topping, uh, and uh, it's high quality. We make our own dough and sauce every day, and it's quick service. Uh, our goal is to get customers in and out of the stores in less than 30 seconds. So we feel it's a real good fit for Penfield Plaza. Why Penfield? Well, we've looked at Penfield for a long, long time and really couldn't find any space uh, until now. Uh, actually, the vice president for Eastern Services, Tracy Schumann, lives in Gananda, and she's loved that spot since she's been there. And it's got great demographics for us. You know, busy families is our niche. That's another big niche for us right there. And uh, the traffic counts and a great workforce. Uh, so we feel we fit in real well with the, the existing structures and landscape out there. Uh, we're a quick service restaurant, so McDonald's, Taco Bell, Subway, Brugger's, Cam, Salvatore's are all like us, so we're not in any way different from them. Uh, we feel we've got adequate means of ingress and egress. I think you're familiar with how to get in and out of Penfair Plaza, but the, uh, the plaza has the two entrances on 250 and one on 441. 
And then there's also ways to get in and out through the catacombs associated with the other businesses there. So we feel that we, we don't have any issues there. Parking, uh, we don't see an issue with parking. We're a takeout only uh, service. So people don't stay long when they come to see us. Uh, our busiest days are Fridays as the uh, work week goes on unless people wanna make dinner at home and Saturdays. So on a, a real busy day, we might need six parking uh, spaces during the lunch hours, 15 uh, for the dinner hours. And again, people are in and out very quickly so we don't occupy a lot of space. Signage, I talked to Harold about this, but uh, you know we would comply with the town signage ordinances. Uh, and I think I have a sample sign in the, in the handouts I had there. Uh, not much noise, sometimes the kids were a little loud inside, but uh, beyond that, we're not looking to put any music outside or any, any means like that. Uh, really no uh, odors, you know, we don't deep fry anything, we bake everything so there's not any emittance of those types of things. And we look to utilize the existing lighting in the, in the, in the uh, structure itself. We don't propose any new lighting or anything like that. Hours of operation, uh, Sundays 11 to 9, uh, Tuesday through Thursdays 11 to 10, Friday and Saturday 11 to 11. And uh, that's what I prepared. Any questions? Uh, yeah, you're not uh, planning on having any live music? No. Uh, we may have uh, a couple tables outside. Yeah, I was just gonna ask you about that. Uh, but we wouldn't supply any music. You know, it gets real warm uh, in the summer and that's our busiest time. And it has the southern exposure. So people might not stay that long if they're out there, but we don't plan on doing any of that, Carol. Okay, so you're planning on having one or two tables outdoors? Yes. With how many seats to each table? Uh, two. Two, and will these be just plain tables or umbrella tables? Just plain tables, there's okay. an overhang there so there wouldn't be a need to protect them. Okay, and the people would go in and buy their pizza and then come out, or would you have somebody out there that they could order their pizza? They would come in and out, Carol, so it would be self-service. Okay. And what about rubbish containers out there? Uh, there's some in the back of the space uh, for both recycling and for the garbage. I guess I'm thinking more about the people who are sitting oh, outdoors. Oh, for the people out front, sure. We'd have a, if we did have the tables there, we'd have a garbage uh, can for them to throw the stuff out. And it's right in front of the store, so we'd make sure we maintained that. Okay. Um, I really think that's all I have. You did a great job on well, this proposal. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. So that's it? <clears throat> yep. Well, well any, any oh, other questions from the board? How many employees at any one time? You know, on a busy day, which would be Friday, we'd probably have seven. Anyone in the audience care to speak about this? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just much. have one extra question. Oh, sure. When is this opening? Well, we're- Not uh, tonight, Carol. That's too bad. Or we'd have brought head <laughs> pizza. You we know? would hope it would be about 90 days from uh, the building permit. So we're hoping in the September timeframe. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Application number two. Michael and Victoria LaMondola, 2040 Penfield Road, uh, Penfield, New York, 14526, request an area variance from Article 3-3-35-D of the code to allow two storage sheds or storage buildings with more square footage than allowed at 2040 Penfield Road. The property is owned by Michael and Victoria LaMondola and is zone R-1-20. This is SBL number 139.08. Dash one dash four eight. This is application number one three Z dash zero zero two one. We're all set. We're all set. Cool. Oh, very good. I am Michael Lamondola. Uh, my wife Victoria and our daughter Teresa behind us here. We are requesting this variance uh, for the purpose of erecting a shed on our property. 
the reason we require that variance is because we already have an external building uh, on the property. <coughs> the reason why we need the second building, it will be an 8 by 10 by the way, it's not anything enormous, single story, and it matches uh, the other external building uh, coloring and uh, basic view. The reason why we need this building is because the structure that currently exists outside of the house is part of the historic uh, exterior of this building. This external structure is brownstone and mortar, and it would be virtually impossible for us to use it for the purposes we require, that being maintenance equipment, um, tractor, uh, leaf blower, all the various implements you would normally use. The, the property is an acre. It's got 30 plus uh, older, large older trees on it. And it's got a significant amount of landscaping. So we tend to have quite a few implements to assist us in performing these tasks easily. Uh, the, we, we did pick this shed in particular because of its uh, durability, low maintenance, and the look. Again, it, it will match, uh, as far as possible, the error of the house. It is a 160-year-old house, so we could only do so much, but we think we did a good job with that. At this point, we're asking for your uh, approval of this. A couple questions for you. Uh, how long have you lived in the home? We have lived there five and a half years now. So is there a garage on the premises where you store everything currently? We do have a two-car garage. We also have a car in there. We own three cars, uh, or two, a truck, an SUV, and a car. And the car is uh, a limited edition Mustang, and so we keep it secure there. Uh, we have a refrigerator in that garage, and then we've got various and sundry other things. It also has a parapet uh, leading up to the kitchen door that we use for our main entrance. So if you can imagine, about five feet of the garage is not usable. Um, you walk up steps, you walk across the parapet, open the door, and you're in. So, and the entry to our basement is there. Concrete steps, that's the only entry we have to the basement is going through the garage. Excuse me, sorry about that. So we have to leave a sufficient room so that we're able to walk through there. Um, I could go on and on about the... <laughs> um, do you store anything in the milk house now? Wood. Wood, so it's just the, the whole structure is not able to support the heavier items that you want to put? It would be getting any, any of this through the door the doors would not let any of the larger equipment through, and we're talking brownstone that thick. If we attempt to modify it, that would be ugly. So you said that the um, storage shed that you're proposing is the milk house? It is, as far as, to the best of our ability to find something uh, that we wouldn't be nailing by hand. Comparable, right, in the materials? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. We, we, it will be on a slab. The slab will have um, additional drainage so as to prevent any water, uh, any additional water buildup on the property. So it will, uh, there is a legacy drain at the very back of the property. Um, we have not been able to find out anything about that. It, even the town super, uh, highway supervisor for the town of Penfield went, hmm, where'd that come from? So, uh, but we will use it for the limited purpose of ensuring that that small plot does not cause uh, backup into our neighbor's yards in particular. We want water to flow through just the way it would as if the building wasn't there. Are you proposing any lighting on the structure, the new structure? Uh, no. Um, and what did you say the acreage was for the property? It's just a hair over an acre. And one acre. That's all I had. 
Go ahead, Carol. Uh, that trailer on the property that says Moo Cow that's for rent, are you renting that or do you rent that out? Uh, we're renting it. We have, um, uh, we've been through uh, an estate dispersal. My wife's father passed. And so um, not having sufficient room in our house at this point in time uh, to put all those things into the house, we found it would be much better to put that out there. It's a uh, month by month, so as soon as we can rearrange things or have a garage sale, one of the two, um, that trailer will leave. And I have to ask, since I happen to be at your home when you called from the airport and you had lost your <laughs> wallet and all, did you recover it? Yes, they they uh, they found where it had wandered off to. <laughs> Apparently, somebody is just not a good enough thief these days. <laughs> good. And thank you for your concern. I appreciate that. Uh, just, I, I would like to just note that we have uh, tonight received. You've <clears throat> given us three emails from neighbors that are supportive of your application. Yes, and, and there is also the letter on the back from the right. historical preservation. And I wanted Board. to mention that that. Um, your property because of the, uh, well, uh, we have a memo from the Penfield Historic Preservation Board which is in favor of the application as well. And really the reason you're here is um, because the Historic Preservation Board uh, in essence doesn't want you to touch the uh, milk house because it's uh, received a uh, place on the national list of historic uh, places. So um, exactly. There's only one accessory structure allowed. You would have two if you left the historic milk house mm -hmm. alone, hence the need for you to be here. Yes. Um, and we have put a considerable cost into restoring that building. Uh, while we still have some work, uh, we, we have been making, ensuring that that piece of uh, that structure remains with the house. And the memo from the, the historic board does state in a pertinent spot that um, you are supportive of keeping the milk house in its current state. So I imagine that uh, we will make that a condition of approval for the second, uh, second shed. Okay, any other questions from the board or comments? Anyone in the audience care to speak? Uh, maybe, maybe your wife should come up and your daughter and at least say hello to us and put your <laughs> face on TV, okay? <laughs> Adorable. <clears throat> we think so, but. <laughs> Biased. You might, yeah, you might be president. Hello. Hello. <laughs> say hi. And she Hello. say her name? Oh, say Teresa. Say hi, I'm Teresa. Well, her name oh, is Shy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait okay. for the first one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, I didn't say uh, earlier that uh, everyone's welcome to stay for this session and obviously the second one as well. Um, the next application is a little bit more complicated. You're more than welcome to stay, but uh, you, you don't have to. You can call tomorrow and find out what happened. Yeah. My guess is nobody has anything to worry about if you want to get home. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Application number three, Kip Finley, P.E., Indus Companies, 1170 Pittsford Victor Road, Pittsford, New York, 14534, requests a change of use permit under Article 3-3-80-B and area variances from Article 3-3-81-C, Article 4-4-2-C, <coughs> Article 4-4-4-A, Article 4-4-11, and Article 4-4-11-J of the code to allow a hotel, accessory uses of a gazebo and a storage shed with less setback buffer and a building height exceeding 70 feet, parking spaces smaller than uh, 9 by 20, and less parking spaces required at 950 Panorama Trail South. The property is owned by RDG Incorporated and is owned LI. This is SBL number 139.09-1. Dash six zero point one. This is application number one three Z dash zero zero two zero. I will check to see if they're in the hall. Strategizing.
I do have an easel and several exhibits if you would like me to set it up, or can I just spin this you can, board? Yeah, you can just move the board to your convenience, yeah. And don't push it too far, uh, because they will try to bring some focus on the TV. Uh, oh, okay. Too, so there is a... So, um, my name is Gary Garofalo. I'm here um, on behalf of Razak Associates, who is working um, with Indus uh, companies, um, with Jet Meta here from Indus companies, and we're here to request um, several variances that will be required for what you see as our proposed six-story, approximately 75-room hotel. Um, as many of you probably already know, the existing lot is zoned limited industrial. Previously, there was a rinky-dink mini golf course that it was used for, and that was operating under a use variance, variance um, which has expired. Um, that is my understanding. Feel free to correct me if I'm uh, misspeaking. Um, so that golf course being a commercial use um, and our proposed uh, hotel being a commercial use and um, the previous variance expiring would require us to um, request a use variance for the hotel as well. Um, we feel that the request is um, not out of the ordinary based on um, the surrounding um, developments in the area. To the east, we have lands that are zoned general residential, generally residential, and there's the golf course over here. And then to the um, west, the lands are generally um, zoned general business, and it's also along a highway corridor. So we feel that the hotel will fit very well between the um, golf course and also the car dealership that is here without really posing any visual impacts um, to any of the surrounding neighbors. Um, there is some single family residential back here uh, zoning. That's my understanding that it is very unlikely that it will be developed as such because of the real steep slopes that we have in this area. Um, as everybody knows, to the north we have the Rondequoit Creek and very steep banks <coughs> leading um, down to the creek. So our intent here is to try to um, make use of the property such that we minimize any disturbance to the natural resources here, which we consider the wooded lands and the steep banks. So they're pretty heavily wooded. Um, and in order to do that, we would need several uh, area variances. And that's what you see on this map here. Um, for the current zoning, it requires a 100-foot setback. And we are requesting um, a 72-foot setback variance instead. Now this area is just for the pool and it would be only a one story portion of the building. So we feel that impact from driving along Panorama Trail South would be minimal um, with respect to the, the reduction of the setback from 100 to 72 or 28 feet thereabouts. Um, the gazebo would also need a, a variance as we're showing it on this plan. Um, we're showing that 86 foot back and I believe that is subjected to a, a 100 foot set, setback as well. Yeah. 
in uh, the LI district, which are which covers our property, code also requires 50 feet setback for side yard, and we are requesting a variance for a 35 foot side yard setback to this uh, gazebo here. We also have, uh, are proposing a shed here, which I believe is also subjected to the 50 foot setback as well. And uh, we're proposing a 10 foot setback on that. Uh, that shed will, will contain the dumpster. Um, the other use variance that, or I'm sorry, area variance that we are requesting is the, the height of the building. Um, the code calls or allows for a six-story building with Carrie, a... excuse me for a minute. Sure. I, I want to keep these relatively tight because there's a lot here. Okay. I think there's another uh, variance for the hotel to the east on the setback. You want to just describe that? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I just want to make sure we got all the setbacks in at once. For the building and then switch to the... the yeah, um, you, you missed one, I think. So. Structures, yes. Um, but we're proposing a, approximately a 62 foot uh, setback and the code for a side setback and the code requires a 150 foot setback for the building and I apologize. That's okay, thanks. Yep. So then moving on to the to the shot, I believe that that um, is subjected to the 50 foot setback as well and um, we're proposing a 10 foot. And again, the reasoning for our request for these area variances is due to limiting the impact on the surrounding steep slopes and the wooded areas. The uh, former Rinky Dink golf course was predominantly up here on the flat area. And um, we're trying to use that, that flat area to the, to the extent practicable. Um, we're actually building the uh, building into the hill. So here's the pool area, and here's behind the building where the grade would be, such that from when you're at building level, it's only going to really appear to be a four-star story building. And the variance that we're requesting on the height is really um, just for the parapet up top. So, how tall is that approximately? Uh, it's the the variance requires or allows six stories up to seventy feet, and we're looking at to meet the hotel's requirements a total height of around seventy eight feet. We're we're bound by the the hotel. Um, Group's requirements to some extent is my understanding. How deep are those, the parapets? How how tall? Tall, but then they go back how from the front to back, how, what's the thickness? Does that run the whole building? Um, just on the front? No, just on, on the front and on the back section here. Um, let's see if I have a scale on the drawing. I, I would guess under 100 feet here and around 30 feet on the uh, smaller one that's just exceeding the height restriction by a few feet. Um, one of our thoughts that this variance wouldn't generate any impact is due to the proximity of it to the Paychex buildings and the height of those buildings as well. And when we first went into this project, we were under the impression that we um, 
wouldn't have any height restrictions, but then when we got deeper into it, we found that there is a, a, a requirement for um, the height variance if um, to get the top of the building on. What's beyond the uh, where the H is with the green? Is is that actually part of the building or? That would be where the building sign would go, and it's not necessarily branded as a Holiday Inn Express yet, even though it says that. But that's going to be additionally additional height above the roof. Now this functions, I believe, as part of the roof. And Jet, you may be able to speak a little bit more intelligently on it. I would guess that there's um, HVAC. Yeah, right. That, does the parapet hide the mechanicals on the roof? Yeah. So okay. um, my name is yep. my name is Jet Meta. I'm the project developer. Gen generally, when we have a project like this, the height goes to the roof deck. So we didn't think it would be an issue because we had 70 feet to work with, and you can see the roof deck is 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 under that. So we have these parapets. This one is barely over. This is a larger, it's kind of just the marquee, it's the branding piece. So um, yes, it is there to hide some rooftop units. Generally, that's, that's what it's there. But it's also just what the prototype of these buildings look like. And it gives us an opportunity to attach a fascia sign. Harold, um, may I ask you a question? If we didn't, uh, if, if it was just the uncovered rooftop units, would the rooftop units count toward the height restriction or not? In, in the past, yes, we have treated them that okay. way as part of the building overall building height. So right. regardless of whether or not they're covered, they still count. They would still be required to, if, if the rooftop units were higher than the 70 feet that they're, they, they can comply with. Uh, all right, thanks. Something else to point out, we're measuring that 70 foot from the lower level up to here. And again, this building is gonna be set into the hill so that we minimize the disturbance of the steep slopes and the wooded lands around it. So at this level, it's still gonna be shorter than that um, 70 foot requirement by, by quite a bit. We're a couple stories here, so 20 feet. Um, less anyways thereabouts minus the eight so at least 12 feet thereabouts less from the back of the building so from a safety standpoint and a, and a fire accessibility standpoint it still falls uh, well within within the codes for access from the, the back side of the building getting back to if the parapet wasn't considered part of the building then we'd have an issue with the sign above the if it was mounted on the rooftop, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. because the code doesn't allow that. So you, you almost have to consider that as part of the height. Right. Okay. And that is the way we were looking at it and why we were asking for that height variance. And um, again, based on the, the surrounding developments with the height of the paycheck buildings and this being built into the hill, um, you know, you, some some codes allow you to take an average on each side, and if we averaged it out, it would be within that 70 feet. So, while we're talking about uh, height and visibility, how visible will this be from, say, Pan Amber Trail? How much will you be able to see driving by in a car? Well, let's go back to the grading plan and take a, a look at it. We start off at the road elevation of around 381, and then we climb up about 391. And um, so we're climbing up almost 20 feet, and then we're setting the building into the hill. And again, the front of the building is only going to be a one-story pool. So from this direction, you're going to be past it before you even realize or recognize the full, full height of the, well, the building for the most part. Um, and there's also a lot of woods around it too, so.
actually looking at more, so we're dropping back down in here to around 379. So coming up is gonna disguise the height more and you're only gonna have this little window in here that's gonna appear to be above that 70 foot um, height uh, code that we're asking the area variance for. Because this does come up so steep, so this, this steepness is gonna hide the height of the building here. But there will be a little shot between here and here where I think you will perceive this the whole height and the parapet's gonna be right in here. So I don't I don't think that extra eight feet is really going to be noticeable from people driving by. Yeah, it sounds like for most views, um, you're not gonna get more than four stories of visibility anyways. Because the back, you're about four stories above the grade, right? Correct. And then, you know, on the side, I guess coming in from the west. You... 20 feet, again, four story On the east side, anyways, this comes up 20 feet. So, again, four stories thereabouts. So, once, and, and again, the pool is in front of it, and that's a one story. So there will be a window in between here and here where you'll see the building hop up in elevation and then seem to disappear as you go by it from west to east and um, opposite from east to west. It would appear to grow a little bit for a short time in, in this area when you're driving by here. Are you going to leave most of the buffering that's there now in there, most of the vegetation? Correct. And that is also another variance, I'm glad you, you brought that up, that I saw in our application. Um, I believe the code requires a 150 foot buffer and we are requesting a 60 foot buffer for vegetation. requesting this that it will be still subjected to the planning board approval. So the intent is to still make sure that there is adequate screening for the adjoining districts, but again, also to minimize um, disturbance of the existing vegetation there. So hence the reduction from 150 down to 60. We wanna <coughs> maintain what's there now kind of nestle it in. Are you proposing 60 or 62? I, I had 60, it's 60. In our application, I believe we actually have 60 in our application. So I, I would say approximately 60, but either way we could um, make a few feet work. And then there is one other variance as well and that ties into, again, trying to protect the, um, the natural characteristics of the property and work within the uh, form of footprint of the mini golf course. Um, we're asking for a reduction in the, the parking. Um, I believe the code requires about 89 for what we're proposing and we're asking it to be reduced to 75 spaces. And in addition, that the spaces be nine by 18 feet instead of nine by 20 foot as required by code. And these are all area variances that we're um, requesting based on trying to, again, stay away from the steep slopes and, and protect the natural beauty of the land there. This hotel will have a great overlook um, for Rondequoit Creek. So well, that's the maximum number of parking spaces you can fit in with this plan? Yes, without um, disturbing more uh, wooded areas and steep slopes. But we've took a look at a Monroe County parking study and we've also looked at some hotel brand guidelines and based on the various criteria, We've determined that they range from 60 to 89 um, 
for servicing a building of this magnitude and uh, 89 being the town of Penfield's code requirement. So it seems to us that um, it's uh, somewhat conservative, the town's is, compared to the other documents that we've, we've looked at. Have you constructed similar size hotels in other areas? Okay, and it, what have you done with, have you found the parking to be sufficient for? Yeah. Je generally speaking, our Hey, Jeff, will you, you mind, because we need to get that mic. You can take the portable one if you want. Yeah, generally speaking, um, when we develop a hotel like this, and we recently opened a property, uh, 76 units in uh, the town of Sweden in Brockport, um, it's mostly one room per parking spot, or one parking spot per room, so a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and the, the logic here really is, uh, in Monroe County, hotel occupancy runs in the high 50s. Uh, probably in, probably year to date, it's probably somewhere more like 56, 57. Percent. Even at percent occupancy. And even on nights when you are sold out, it's very likely that more than one room is accommodated by one car. So it tends to work out pretty well for us, a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, many of the brands have that ratio as well. So. Um, you know, we're proposing something similar to a Hampton Inn or a Holiday Inn Express here, and they approve the site plans as well. These large brands with, that have developed thousands of these locations, their standard tends to be one-to-one -one as well. Does that also include or factor in employee parking? It does. Yeah. That one-to-one -one still applies? Correct. Yes, correct. And you found that to be adequate in your other it has been, hotels? Yeah. Mike, do you mind if we jump in? Uh, no, not at all. Did you try uh, any other, um, let's say, iterations of the uh, the hotel location to in an attempt to minimize the variances that you needed? Turning it one way, turning it another way. Yeah, configuration. Confi yeah, thanks, Joe. Different different configurations. Or we we did, and this seems to be the best configuration in particular with the building envelope in the, the lie of the land. If we push the building back further, we push the parking back further behind or into the uh, steep slope. And ideally, in a hotel situation, you have some parking in the back, some in the front, so you could thin out the, the crowd, per se. And, If we were to put all this parking in the back, then we push this up closer into the road and we will make the front setback even worse. And um, also we would get more into the embankment in front. Because there's a pretty good, a pretty good drop of an embankment in here that we're trying to stay out of. And we're actually showing a retaining wall here to try to prevent getting into it too much. So we tried to balance it in the middle um, and, and make it all work with the, the 75 spots, which we have found before in the past to be sufficient for this type of facility. What if you squared it up parallel to the road <laughs> and moved the parking to the front, for instance? Why, why did that work? There is a lot of steep embankment here as well. Okay. This is very steep compared to the area in here. So to move all the parking to the front would require mass grading and a massive retaining wall across the front here. And it would, in my opinion, appear a little scary to somebody driving down. And it'll also make the building appear to be in a hole so we're trying to balance all of that with retaining walls and positioning and, and angling to blend it with the natural lie of the land. Again, we have a, a, a decent flat spot up here where the um, mini golf course was. We have some steep slope in here where we're gonna use the building as a retaining wall 
we have some steep slope up front where we would put a retaining wall in and this is generally flat. So with a retaining wall here and a building here, we could flatten that out a little bit more. But as you can see, the counters are feathered out here, but they get really tight over here. So to try to move parking to the front would mean massive amount of grading and, and much more retaining walls. And we don't feel that you would get a nestled um, look to the building as, as we have it positioned. Um, again, it ties into the height and the visual as you drive by it. As uh, you pointed out, sir, that it's really going to look like a four-story building from both sides of it for the most part, except for the little stretch in the middle. And even then, we're at 371 and 380. Too, so this is about 10 foot up so it's gonna look like maybe a five-story building from the middle part here <coughs> or 10 feet up so it would make it look like a five-story building from the middle there so this the design with the retaining walls that we have and how we have it positioned with the natural lie of the land and using the building as a retaining wall and then putting our the majority of our parking out out back and keeping it out of the steep slopes is what we feel is the, the best design out of the different iterations we've looked at. It's um, only a three acre parcel and under the current code, the developable area is only about 0.66 acres. So we're, we're working with some constraints here. However, we feel that this is a, a really good um, use um, being a commercial building, a hotel, um, based on the surrounding uses for an uh, area that's zoned um, light industrial. Okay. I just had a couple. Of, go for it. Um, I, there's, there's a few more variances we didn't cover. Uh, with regard to the buffering, I believe you have um, a variance for the gazebo. On the west side, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I thought we, for, oh, for buffering. Yeah, for that. buffering. Uh, okay. Uh, 50 feet requirement on the west, and I think you were talking about 36, proposing 36 feet. 36, correct. So that would be a 14-foot variance. Okay, I and thought it was only a setback, but it's not only setback, but buffering yeah, sure. on the gazebo. The buffering okay. is the same. Okay. So also then you get into the, uh, the shed. Yes. 50 foot for buffering, you're, you're proposing. And we're proposing 10. 10, yes. So that's a 40 footer. And then the parking and drive aisles, those are both, there's 50 from the east, from the west. And I think you got a 10 foot there. Same as the shed. Same as the shed. Okay. And then on the east, there's a 50 foot requirement for the parking. And I think it's a foot from the line. And, and as long as we're on that side of the property, and I had this discussion with, with Kip a couple of weeks ago, there appears to be what I thought was a gore. But there, there is, yes. It, where the, the Big Oak property doesn't quite go to your property and your property doesn't quite go to the Big Oak property and it seems to connect over to the Filbert Park. Correct. Panorama. And it's approximately a 15 foot wide gore. So, assuming that um, we could readjust the property lines and divide it down the middle, we would gain approximately seven and a half feet, plus or minus, based on an even split, that is. Right. And, and I asked Kip to do a little research in, in to that regard to see how it may have developed someplace. And obviously, both these properties are fairly old. Mm -hmm. uh, the Big Oak property and, and, uh, and the subject property. Uh, there may have been some need for, for that little piece because the Philbrick Park used to be a sewer treatment plant. And there may have been some need to, to have some access out to Panorama just for servicing either to or from the sewer treatment plant. I don't know. So it may be property that is owned by the town of Penfield. 
Very well could be. Um, Kip did have our surveyors research it, mm -hmm. and based on their research, um, they have determined that it is a gore. So if um, it, it isn't, it would be a very old document that right. wasn't filed with the county. And sometimes that happens, but... Right. Well, the big oak used to be the sort of the, the three property boundaries between Penfield and, mm -hmm. and Harrington and Pittsford. So, and you know, that's that's how old we're going here. Yeah, they're common using an oak tree. Yeah. Common back then, they'd right. use big rocks and big sure. oak trees right. or big maple trees as as monumentation. So, well, do, so uh, does the pavement go to within a foot? Um, in your plan. Yeah. Yes, to the existing property line. However, we do feel that we would be able to um, work with the neighbors and readjust the property line and obtain half of that gore anyways. Um, I guess the other thing we could do if there is a feeling by this board for more buffer here is remove one, two, three, four, another 11 spots, but um, then that may be cutting it a little too tight for um, Indus companies on, on this hotel group for their parking. Um, we could possibly even find room for a few spaces too in other areas as well. Aside from the gore, I think you're better off applying for the variance based on the existing property line. And that's what our intent was because again, the, the <coughs> other people on the other side of it have rights to it too and they may want the whole thing. So worst case scenario, instead of arguing with them, mm -hmm. you know, we may end up with none or just a five feet, you know, a third of it per you se. You have to come back, which I don't think you want to do. So. Right. If, if I could, um, if I could just speak to the gore, you know, it would, the way we've talked this through is we would really like to take the property or the proposal through the process the way it is. It took, it took me about a year to get the site under control to where we actually could bring it to the, you know, to the different boards for the approval process. I would be very nervous that we make any assumptions that we're going to be able to pick up another five feet. Um, f frankly, it's very unlikely, and to put the project into, um, it just it just could right. come out of control. For us. Yeah, that was what I was trying to say. All right, can we go back to the roof, uh, to the roof line? That's, I, I understand why the parapet wall on the left for the HVAC units, the rooftop units. What is in between the two parapets that are sticking above the roof, okay? You have a, a top edge of the roof there. The actual roof is how far below that edge? Are you calling this yes, line here? That's, that's the roof line that we can see, right? The actual roof has got to be recessed, right? Am I correct from there? Slightly. Okay, yeah, because I, I guess my reason is you, you probably have to allow some kind of escape to the roof in case there's a major fire, right? Usually there's always an access to the roof. If you can't go down, you correct. can go up anyway. Correct. So is there a distance that people, it's not just a straight, Bye bye, off the edge of the roof. Even if it's a foot or two foot. That's correct. Okay, that that was my question. So the roof line is recessed from the edge of that parapet. Correct. Okay, and and you said about. A um, couple feet. A couple feet. Okay, that's enough. That's all I had. I I just wanted to make sure that the roof was recessed from that point, so that. You know, or, or you may run into with the fire marshal. If you allow people up there, you could walk off the edge of the building. <laughs> I mean, they still could, but they'd have to trip off the edge of the building. That's correct. Okay, that's all. Jump. And jump, yeah, or jump off the jump. edge. I have a parking question. Sure. Uh, somewhere in here you said that you may add more spaces or land bank spaces. And with the constraints on the property, where would that land banking be or the extra spaces? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, we were proposing some stormwater infiltration in this area. We've had a geotechnical study done 
and we've had borings performed in the soil as uh, very conducive to infiltration, which takes care of our green infrastructure, our stormwater quantity, and also our stormwater quality. So if it wasn't for that, this project wouldn't be here before this board. However, as we do have, um, you know, the soils going in our favor, um, we could bury our stormwater facilities and make this whole area a paved parking lot instead of an infiltration basin with some nice landscaping. Um, I would personally hate to see that happen because with respect to the stormwater codes, they encourage you to reduce your, your pervious pavements, try to obtain variances for reduction of parking spaces, especially if you don't need it. Put shade islands in that break up the heat that comes off the pavement. So um, we could probably also put a few more spots in, in this area too, as well, where we're showing the snow storage. But um, in all honesty, it's, 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 a, it's a tough site to add additional spots. And with a 56% occupancy rate, um, a lot of the spots are going to be vacant most of the times. And again, when you relate that to the stormwater requirements and trying to reduce and minimize your impervious areas, um, I don't professionally see the need for additional spaces, more so than 75. Um, I got several hotel clients, and um, one just recently opened his doors, and he said he's doing very good, and he only hit at his peak 86% when RIT was having a function. So there's still 14% of the rooms vacant. <coughs> Anybody know how long this property has been unused? Ten, <coughs> ten years? 15 to, 15? to 20. Yeah. 15 to 20 years, okay. Have we, do, Harold, do you know if the town has entertained any other applications for it in that time period? <coughs> that just for whatever reason, weren't approved or people didn't go forward with them? I, I don't recall any applications that have been submitted and gone to a board level, let alone even just the staff looking at it. Right. Right. Do we have any other questions from the board? Mike, can you, do you think you could run through, just to make sure we're all on the same page, run through the requests, yeah. make sure that we've covered them all, and if you guys think we missed anything, or Harold, obviously, jump in, and let's just, yeah, I, I just want to make sure we don't yeah. have a resolution that is lacking in some Yeah, manner. I appreciate that. I think Here's, it'd be nice to go through them once. You want me to go through them? Clean. Sure. Here's what I have for setbacks on the hotel. Um, the front setback from Panorama uh, required 100 feet. You're proposing 72. That uh, would be a 28-foot variance. Uh, on the east side, it's a 150-foot setback required. You're proposing 62. That's an 88-foot uh, variance. The gazebo from the front, um, there's a 100-foot requirement. You're proposing 86, so that would require a 14-foot variance. Uh, on the west of the for the gazebo, there's a 50-foot requirement. You're proposing 35. So that would be a 15-foot variance. We're, we're, I'm sorry, let me just sorry. stop you. That we're showing 36 on our map, so okay. we want to make it match the map. Yeah, I mean that's why I asked you that. You said appreciate that. 14 feet. Uh, the buffering shed. Too. That's buffering on there too. You're adding that. No, I'm doing it. I'm just doing one, setbacks. Yep, one 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 yeah. Then you got the shed, 50-foot uh, requirement on the west side. Uh, ten, you're proposing 10 feet, that's a 40 foot variance. For the Correct. buffering, the hotel, you got 150 feet on the east side, you're proposing 60, so that would be a 90 foot variance. The gazebo on the west side, there's a 50 foot buffering requirement, you're proposing 36, that's a 14 foot variance. The shed on the west is also 50 feet, 10 foot, uh, you're proposing, that's a 40 foot buffering variance. And for the parking areas on the west, it's 50 feet. You're proposing 10, that's a 40 foot variance. Uh, on the east, it's also 50 feet, and uh, you're proposing one foot, that's a 49 foot variance. Could we change on the buffer to the east from 60 to 62 feet so they, they line up? We could bring the, the buffering. Right, we yeah. could bring the buffering right to. Sure. 
the edge of the curb there. So that's, for the, it. that's the hotel. Yep. 62. All right. So that's changed to 88 foot variance. Right. Then Thank on you. the building height, you're allowed 70 feet maximum. You're proposing 78 feet. That's an eight foot variance. Correct. Uh, parking spaces. The dimensions uh, requirements nine by twenty for each space. You're proposing nine by eighteen. Correct. So that's a two foot uh, variance in length. The number uh, required eighty nine. You're proposing seventy five. That's a fourteen space variance. And finally, just you're seeking a, a change in use permit to allow the hotel uh, as opposed to the old use as a miniature golf course. I think Correct. that covers, that's what I have. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, nice thanks. job. Thanks. Thanks. thanks for going Thank through you. one more time. Okay, no other questions from the board? Pete, you have anything to say about this? <laughs> or uh, you just... Uh, he caught it and was going to ask about this buffer and the uh, setback of 62 and 60, but so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. I think he just made that up. Just <laughs> <laughs> Looks good to speak on the record. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, good presentation, and uh, the hearings will now be adjourned, and we'll take a brief recess and reconvene in the back. Thank okay. you. Thank you.